It's no news anymore. Um, as the president said on the inauguration day, it's gone, talking about fuel subsidy. But there still is a lot of talk. Uh, it has generated a lot of reactions. And um, indeed, uh, one of those shall be our guest, you know, the perspectives of our guest this morning, uh, Honorable Hilliard Etta, former acting national chairman of uh, APC, is our guest. He reaches us from our Abuja studio this morning. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Etta. Good morning, my brother, Yuri. It's been a while. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you very much for making the time for us. Now, it's, very, it's a very, very serious matter because um, uh, it is thought that this is going to affect everybody. In fact, nobody is saying it won't affect. Everybody is saying that, yep, it, 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 is, a bitter, it is a bitter pill, but it needs to be swallowed. Uh, to quote just one voice, um, the, chief, uh, the, 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 the head of uh, NMPC has said that um, if we don't have this fuel subsidy removal, there is every danger that Nigeria could go bankrupt as one of his reasons for it. Um, our topic today is Nigeria's fraudulent subsidy regime. And that is coming from a wide swath of the society who believe that, you know, it's not a real thing. So, Honorable Etta, how do you see it? Well, thank you very much for having me this morning. Um, I think this is my first time here after the inauguration of, our, of the 16th President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, His right. Excellency Senator Bola Metinibu. Um, it is indeed very sad that he took the very courageous President uh, Bola Metinibu to put a stop to this fraud. Um, uh, if you do the numbers, it will shock you that Nigeria spends um, about 7.6 trillion naira every year to, um, uh, to, to, to do a subsidy on, on petroleum products. And this amounts to about 16.5 billion dollars at the central bank rate uh, of, of, of foreign exchange. Now, to know the, the value of these humongous amounts of money that we're talking about, you need to now um, put it in proper perspective. Um, to construct a road, a kilometer of road in Nigeria, cost between approximately 300 a million naira to about 1.5 billion naira, depending on the topography and other variables. Uh, so it would mean that the money that we expend on subsidy in a year in Nigeria is capable of doing between 10 to 25,000 kilometers of road in Nigeria. And um, you, you know this, what this means to the road deficit that we uh, we presently have in Nigeria. To construct a turbine, a gas-powered electricity turbine, one gas turbine uh, cost about approximately 2.5 million US dollars. And that will mean that the monies that we expend on subsidy will give us about 65 turbines in Nigeria that can generate over, I, I, I'm not very particular, I don't, I don't have that figure, but I know that um, the top, the generating set that we have in my place that was built by General Obasanjo um, was to generate about 500 megawatts of electricity and it has, uh, I would think, about five turbines. Um, and so this is huge. Now, you know, if you also, uh, for that investigate, you will find to your chagrin that the um, two, 2022 uh, budget, national budget of the Republic of Ghana, was about uh, approximately about uh, 12 billion uh, US dollars, uh, far less than what we spend on, on petroleum subsidy. 
Uh, the same thing for the uh, budget of Cameroon, the Republic of Cameroon, which was about approximately about $11 billion uh, as of last year. Um, so it is, it, is, uh, it is scary that we were doing this until, or until um, last Monday, where the president put a stop to it. Um, there is something that, that Nigerians must have a conversation about, which is the, the cost of uh, the, what they call the landing cost, uh, that, that is about, you know, from the records of the NNPC uh, that is available to us, uh, the landing cost of a liter of fuel is, is about 359 naira per liter. Uh, now, which means that if Nigeria were to produce its own fuel, if the refineries that we have in Nigeria uh, were to produce the fuel that we need in Nigeria, it means that about 359 Naira will be taken away from the cost of fuel per liter. Uh, that is not to say that other variables may not come in, in, in terms of transportation and all of that. So what I'm saying is that the, the uh, external variable uh, within the context of the cost of a liter of fuel in Nigeria that is uh, a part of the subsidy is too huge. Whereas the the the, if you take away 185 naira that was uh, the government regulated price of a liter of fuel uh, and then look at the 359 that was added to it as the subsidy on, on, the, on the liter of fuel, uh, it, it is too huge a burden for any nation uh, to have undertaken. It is, it is exciting. I am very glad that the president has put a stop to this. Now, when the word fraudulent is used, and uh, that has been used quite often by uh, commentators in this sector, in spite of all the explanations that we're getting, um, Nigerians just don't seem to trust that um, the whole business of fuel subsidy as it is, uh, is transparent, and that it is favoring, you know, a tiny, tiny, uh, slice of our population, which is really up there. So this whole question about the fraudulent aspect of it and how difficult it is going to be because these guys have been, uh, you know, b benefiting from this all this while. And so, you know, I, who, who was it that I heard saying it of recent that, look, you go this kind of a route, there's going to be a pushback. Address that aspect, that, that allegation of fraud in the system, if you will. Well, it is, very, it is very correct for people to say so, uh, because almost everything about the subsidy regime is shrouded in secrecy. In fact, uh, the 359 Naira that is quoted as landing charges, uh, you know, you, they just give us the figure. I mean, nobody has ever been able to explain to us that, okay, if you transport uh, petroleum products from this uh, port, to a Nigerian port, this is how much it's going to cost you, or uh, this is what the customs charge. Nobody has been able to break it down for us. For instance, there are ports that are nearer to Nigeria than other ports. Is it that all of them charge the same amounts of money? So there are so many things that are shrouded in secrecy within the regime of subsidy. And again, if we subsidize and we sell at 185 and 195 Naira, and our, and our neighbors, like Ghana, Ghana sells at about 830 Naira. I don't know what Togo sells at. I don't know what Republic of Benin sells at. But I know it is far higher than 185 Naira. So what it means is that you, you are just encouraging people to take fuel, uh, subsidized fuel from Nigeria to the neighboring countries. In fact, there is um, a conversation around the figure that is banded around by the NNPC. People are questioning whether truly we are using 60 million liters of fuel per day. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. all of that is because there is profits to be made. If our uh, petroleum products are sell at, at uh, competitive prices, I, I believe that there will be no to to, um, to smuggle it out of the country and make humongous profits as people are presently doing. So it is it is um, uh, it is 
it is true that not, not much is known about the, the subsidy regime. And anything that is shrouded in secrecy, anything that is done under the table, of course you know what the consequences are. So it is true that uh, a lot of people are suspicious, very extremely suspicious, about whether there is even uh, uh, um, subsidy or not. In fact, people go to the extreme to ask whether there is subsidy or not. So it is important that we deregulate the market. Uh, now that we have the Dangote refinery, and I, I even forgot, forgot to tell you that it is said that the Dangote refinery cost about $19 billion to build, whereas Nigeria spent $16.5 billion on subsidy last year. What it means is that if Nigeria were to add only $2.5 to the monies that we expended on subsidy, Nigeria would have been able to build the biggest single train refinery in the world, just like Dangote has done. And flowing from what Dangote has done, it means that by August, that we will now have enough fuel refined in Nigeria, we will now be, not be talking about the landing cost. It therefore means that fuel must necessarily be cheaper than what it is presently sold at the pump stations today. Remember also that beyond the repairs of the, Niger the government-owned refineries, there is also a very large refinery going on built by the Boa Company in Akwa Ibom State. I am not sure that I have the dates of the completion at hand, but I do know that in no distant future, that refinery will also come on stream. There are about three or four modular refineries in the Niger Delta that I know that are at points of completion. What I therefore mean is that within the next few months or in a year, at the most, that Nigeria will have enough petroleum products refined in Nigeria without the variables of what they call landing cost. And so I believe that petroleum products would necessarily come down in terms of the pricing. Indeed. We, we have heard that and we do hope it is so. But um, uh, again, you, you also spoke about the shrouding in secrecy. Now, all of that secrecy and Nigerians trying to understand what exactly are the goings on inside the uh, oil sector. When the chief executive of NMPC was briefing uh, the, um, uh, the, the ruling party yesterday at the Secretariat, um, he, he had said that there is no data on the volume of uh, fuel, petrol, consumed in the country. There is no data on the volume of fuel consumed in the country, but that of offloading from depots is always available. You know, I'll still be scratching my head over that. Maybe you can help uh, uh, give us your understanding. <laughs> Maybe, you know, there, if there is no data on the, on, the, on the number of liters of fuel that we are consuming on a daily basis, but that there is always difficult, um, there is always, you know, uh, data on offloading from the depots. What did you understand that to mean? I, I, I think it's quite it's quite unfortunate that it is coming from um, it is coming from him. Uh, one would have expected that he would be in a position to tell Nigerians uh, at least approximately what we consume uh, as fuel in Nigeria. If he cannot tell us, I wonder who can. I mean, this is this is some of the uh, contradictions that we have in our government that is uh, perplexing. And I do know that a, a man of numbers has assumed the presidency of Nigeria. In no time, these things will get them. We will not, will not, we will not have to go to any government office to get details of things like this. We will just click on your, on your phone or your computer and you will get it. This is, these, are, these are information that should be at the tip of the fingers of all Nigerians. It is extremely, extremely uh, unfortunate that that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, um, that kind of information can come uh, from the man that they came from yesterday. 
Mm. Uh, it's so heart-rending uh, that we can be in the 21st century, we can be in 2023, and a man who is charged with the responsibility of importing or regulating the importation of fuel in Nigeria is telling us that he does not have the data uh, of how much fuel is imported in Nigeria. I, I, I believe that uh, this has been the kind of story that we have been having uh, from government offices in the past um, past decades. And it is not good enough. And I know the president that we have today. I know that those kinds of things will not happen under his watch. Indeed. And this is what is exciting about the new president. This is what is exciting uh, about the new regime, the, the new uh, sheriff that is in town. This is uh, the reason some of us um, did everything to make sure that he became the president of Nigeria. We are very happy that God has answered our prayers that we will have a, a, a government that is modern, a government that is responsive, a government that is not um, a joke, because that seemed to me to be a joke. I mean, if um, you're in your house and you do not know the number of children that you have in your house as a father, uh, then it is, you're a joke of a father. Mm. That is exactly the kind of sentiment that I hold about things like that and people like that. Okay, uh, and the vice president has also chipped in. He said that, look, this fuel subsidy thing, if we don't get rid of it like the president, he was speaking on the president having got rid of it on, the, uh, on Monday. If we don't get rid of it as the president indeed announced, um, it will get rid of our, uh, this fuel subsidy thing, will get rid of our economy. Uh, therefore, uh, thereby sort of, you know, aligning himself with, this is a task that uh, must be done. And I don't think very many people disagree. However, the method, and um, I hesitate to use the word palliatives. Uh, I, 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 I heard Dele Alake, uh, one of the people you know, who are speaking uh, uh, for, for the government now, saying that not so much a palliative as an intervention. But I wanted to um, ask you, do you have the understanding, do you, do you have the impression that, unlike people are saying, can you please reverse this and let us talk? We have until the end of June before, why are you starting us at the beginning of June? Um, can, can you sort of understand those people? Because, you know, they have serious, uh, you know, uh, gripes as well. This is going to bite very, very hard. I, I agree that it's going to bite initially. I mean, uh, most new things do. Uh, um, but but uh, it's, like, it's like having to consume a very bitter medicine or an ailment. There is, there is no better time to have it. You, you better have it as soon as you can uh, to, to deal with the ailment that is uh, affecting you. I, I am not bothered about the time. The timing is right. I, hear, I have heard people talk about the honeymoon that the president ought to have enjoyed. I don't think that he came here to, to enjoy any honeymoon. He came here to take very difficult decisions, and uh, yeah. removal of subsidies is one of those decisions that he had to take as a great leader uh, that we all know him to be. Uh, now, uh, coming to talk about, there's all that, another thing that you said. Yes, whether um, subsidy, uh, what, although what it was say? referred to by Dele Aleke yesterday as a oh, 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 intervention. Oh, no. You know, I, when I hear palliatives, when I uh, hear but, palliatives, so, so, I so, laugh. Pal yeah, right, because... Please. Thank you. Please continue. Yes. Yeah. Palliatives... Can I go on? Or, yes, palliatives or yeah. interventions. No, no, no. When I hear palliatives, I laugh because most times when Nigerians want to take, uh, when Nigerian governments want to take uh, the people for a ride, they bring us all to us as palliatives or subsidy, uh, cushioning, and all of those kinds of things. The best thing to do at this point is to expand our economy using the instrumentalities of some fiscal and monetary policies to expand our economies, find jobs for people, create wealth, expand the revenue and make people rich, make Nigerians rich, make, give opportunities to Nigerians to thrive. That is what the president is intending to do. If you read his article, if you read his article of faith, I, I, li I liken the, his manifesto to his article of faith, uh, his contact with Nigerians. He has made it very clear that he wants to expand the economy, he wants to expand the revenue base, he wants to use the instrumentality of fiscal and monetary policies to deal with the issues of us importing everything and all of the things that we can 
you know, that we use in Nigeria. For instance, in 2016, Nigeria expended $18 million to import toothpick. If that is not despicable, that if that is not completely, uh, I, I don't know the word to use. That we, where I come from, the the the, the raw material for toothpick is lying waste in the in the forest of Akampa, where I come from, and yet we expend eighteen million dollars to import um, toothpicks. Not only are we not um, uh, using the raw materials that God has given to us, we have also taken the jobs that we would have created and taken them to China. The same thing for Timothy Press. We, 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 we expended $400 million in the importation of tomato paste in 2016. And you know that Nigeria is capable, more than capable, of producing the tomato paste that Niger Nigerians can use. What I'm saying in essence is that there are so many things, especially consumer goods, that we can produce in this country. And the president has promised us that he's going to use the instrumentality of some fiscal and monetary and trade policies to make sure that those industries are established in Nigeria, jobs are created, revenue base is expanded. The, 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 and, and again, before I go, read, I, I would like for Nigerians to read the Renewed Hope document. You will see one of the fundamental pillars of uh, the Tinibu administration, I dare to tell you, is that the interest rate and the foreign exchange regime will be seriously, seriously tackled in a manner that will help to expand the industrial and the productive base of the Nigerian economy. And again, close the window for corruption and humongous fraud in the foreign exchange regime in such a manner that it will affect the economy positively. The moment the economy is expanded, the moment the productive base is expanded, the moment people can establish industries, service uh, units, with, the, with, 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 with loans that they can pay because the kind of no country simply can develop with the kind of interest rates that is presently in Nigeria, which is between 18 and 30 percent. No country. Mm -hmm. I do not know of any country that has developed with that kind of regime. And he has promised to tackle those ones. Those are the things that we need for him to focus, not to talk about uh, uh, um, palliatives, Oh, they are going to buy many buses. They are going to. Those are to, for me is tokenism. Okay, one moment. Tokenism let me bring in, and let me, scam. I beg your pardon. Let me bring in Mr. Balogun calling in from the UK. Good morning, Mr. Balogun. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Uh, nice morning, to see sir. you again. I've been wanting to see you. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, Uncle Yori, what an interesting time for Nigeria. It's a very, very interesting time. And I'm happy that um, our able president will be able to hold the bull by the horn. Very, very appreciated. Some of us in diaspora, we, we have a lot back home. And we are telling them this is the right decision to be taken. But, however, what I think that we need to do at this time around, because of the peculiarity of our country, People are here, people on the news, saying here, abroad, 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 abroad. Please, Nigerians, don't be deceived by these people who have not even gone to Ghana. And they are talking about abroad. And this is done in abroad. During COVID, that is done. A television station this morning, somebody was putting, they gave a check. Uh, somebody in Nigeria he has a check. It is not true. It is not true. But, in our own case, what I think we should do here, we have to go the way we are going now. There's no point for him to go back. Oh, we lost Mr. Balogo, but I think he did get the crux of uh, his matter out. Thank you for calling in, uh, uh, Mr. Balogo. Uh, so, well, Honorable Etta, you, you were hearing that, uh, I don't know, I wanted to ask... Um,
without prejudice to all that you have said by way of explaining the situation we are in now, and one of the things, one of the major things we're doing to confront and address it, um, there still is the matter of surviving to reap the benefits of, you know, that, that, are, that will come from all of this. And that is Labour's position. Uh, Labour's position yesterday at this meeting that was not resolved, as you know, I think Labour was doing its job, wasn't it? It was looking out for the Nigerian worker and was saying how, in fact, Labour accused the federal government of holding a gun, a metaphoric gun to its head, you know, in negotiating. So how do you pull this kind uh, of a move and then say, okay, let's talk? You've done it. And, uh, okay, I, I, I understand Balogun is back. The call dropped. Mr. Balogun, would you like to conclude your thoughts? Yes, sir. What, okay. I, what I'm trying to say is that, number one, sir, number one, sir, hello, sir. Can yes, I can me, hear sir? you. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that what I think that should be done is not left for the state. The state, but most of you, look at Lagos State now. I think it's only Lagos State I can, I can remember. I don't know all that state. What they need to do now is, in terms of transportation, okay, transportation, Lagos State government should now make their transport easy, students should be free, the age 60 should be free, and then they should bring down these prices so that people could be able to go to work. And then these other people, if you, if you go by a cab, that is your problem, then. They should add more buses. We need more buses. Other states should do the same. It is not federal. They should not put this body on federal, federal, federal. It's not done. Okay, Mr. Balogo, thank you very much for calling in and indeed for calling back. Appreciate you and appreciate your call. So, as I was saying, uh, Honorable Letter, what do you think? Uh, Labor doing its job. Looking out for Nigerian workers, it says that they are in an impossible situation. And I think, although I don't know how far Labour will get with its, uh, as it was referred to, I think a reporter asked uh, the uh, Labour leader what his, what his prayer was, and it was to return to the status quo. Um, but Labour, generally speaking, is doing its job, isn't it? It, it wants to know uh, how the ordinary man is going to survive in Nigeria. There are those... If you, if you like, take it to 5,000 Naira a liter. They will see, fill all the tanks of my car. But there are the ordinary people who, this, with this regime, will not be able to go to work and come back if something isn't done. Well, uh, let me, I, I want to join Mr. Balogu in, in saying that uh, we do not have only one government in Nigeria. Uh, government has, uh, has you know, uh, they, we have some national governments. Uh, apparently, the only one that is working is Lagos. Um, I think that uh, other states <coughs> learn to do what Lagos has done. I know that I lived in Lagos, so I know that there is a very efficient uh, ferry service in Lagos that is managed by the Lagos state government. There is a BRT. Uh, now they have the rail, the rail, the light rail in Lagos. And and you 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 know it is not a coincidence that the architect of all of that is now the leader of Nigeria. Other state government should know that uh, everything does not uh, does not begin and end with the federal government. The, the federal government, uh, naturally, in places where uh, absolute federal uh, federal system is practiced, is is more or less a, a policy government. The the practicalization, the implementation of those policies, fall mostly on the on the sub national and and local governments. Of, of, of the end, the, the polity. Uh, so I want to encourage other uh, state governments to know that uh, um, the route that Lagos State took is not that they, they don't need to reinvent the wheel to take the same route and get to where Lagos has gotten to today. Uh, having said so, I, I, I want to say that yes, uh, my brother Yuri, there is going to be um, some, some suffering. Some people are going to go through some stress. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, because there is what they call the multidimensional, multidimensional poverty that is uh, ravaging Nigeria today. I do know that some Nigerians are going to go through stress, but I, I, I want to I want to beg Nigerians and plead with them that the man who is at the helm of affairs today understands the workings of modern economy, and that 
sooner than you know that the, the price of fuel will come down. Um, and again, not, not just that, um, the economy will be expanded in such a way that uh, people will have jobs, uh, people will have opportunity, economic opportunities to pursue their dreams and all of that. And, and they should give it maximum support. Okay. I believe that for you to be a great leader, you must take some very difficult decisions. You are taking one very difficult decision that other very difficult decisions to be taken in Nigeria. And he has shown that he is not scared of taking those decisions. And I'm excited, and I think that Nigerians should be excited that we have a president who is interested in the overall development of Nigeria, not for a few people who hide under the regime of subsidy and feed fat on the resources of Nigeria. Okay. And indeed, uh, just as you say, um, some of the things that you said, uh, the Nile uh, uh, the chief executive of the NNPC, uh, had also you know, mentioned some of those points that, look, this thing is in all likelihood uh, going to come, talking about the pump price of fuel, is in all likelihood going to come down uh, because it will now be dictated by uh, market forces, uh, among other things. He, he did say that. But I'll take a break now, Honorable Etta. Uh, please stay with us. We'll be right back. We'll continue with this conversation. Every week, Green Angle, in partnership with World Aid, will bring you a documentary series on environmental issues affecting Nigeria's amazing biodiversity, from climate change, air pollution, and wildlife conservation. We will be traveling across Nigeria to give you on the ground report of the issues affecting our environment. It airs every Saturday at 4.30 p.m., only on TVC News. Okay, welcome back, and uh, our guest is the former Acting National Chair of the All Progressives Congress, Honorable Hilliard uh, Etta. He's our guest this morning. And I have a, I have a caller uh, calling in from Badagri uh, this morning. Um, good morning. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, Okoyori. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Thank you for calling in. Please go ahead. I'm calling from Magade State. My contribution... My contribution to your program is this. As our um, man here has said earlier on, the problem with this nation is that we are not putting things in place before we act. For example, now, are the, uh, there is not anything like electric buses. Like people that are inside in Ikurudu, from the agri in Ikurudu now to Pangroof is 1,500 naira. So how can work out? How do you how cope? Then, apart from that, the, uh, are the government go to that size? In, in terms of uh, their, uh, their uh, expenditure, probably their cars and properties. Because when we see deputy government on highways with four, five, seven, eight cars, and you're talking of subsidy, and you are saying there's no one in the force of the government, how are you going to believe that? Are they going to that site? You have 100 members in Abuja. Are they going to that site? Please, sir, we need to look into this very way. We are, we, the masses are suffering. This is not our fault, a lot of things. Please. You have a blessing, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you very much uh, for calling in Sunday from uh, Bagada. I correct myself. Not, you know, uh, I don't know how I heard uh, <laughs> Badagri uh, that time. So sorry about that. Um, so um, there you have it. Um, uh, coming back to you, according to Mr. You know, Kiari uh, yesterday, when he was explaining or briefing uh, the APC at its national secretariat. He said last year the federal government uh, paid uh, subsidy, uh, uh, said payment of subsidy will stop by June 2023, and it budgeted 3.36 trillion naira uh, for the payments. And you've just explained we just can't call, carry on like that. In fact, Mr. Kiari was saying the same thing that we're absolutely not able to carry on like that. Now, everybody agrees subsidy has to go, but <laughs> The sort of uh, way it went, without anything being in place yet, uh, to sort of, uh, you, you, you know the way Nigerians are feeling, that look, if I had known that because this has happened, uh, subsidy is going to be affected, and so prices are going to go up. But right now, 
most people think that we're left naked. We're naked here. We're exactly the way we were the day before President Tinumbu announced this. Now he has announced this. It has had its effect. And here we are, no different from, you know, day before yesterday, uh, where before Tinumbu had announced this. So that's an area. Do you think, what do you think? Do you think it was precipitate? Uh, do you think it was accidental? Or do you think all of this was intentional? That, you know, we will remove it? Well, you see... Um, no, but before the, the departure of the former president, uh, President Buhari, of course, Nigerians were told that uh, subsidy will end in June. In June. And um, if, you, if you listen to the address of the president, he, he only agreed with the former president. Now, I, I, I do not know if the position of the NNPC is at variant with what the president said or not. I am not, I am not part of that conversation. But I do know something. Now, if most stations are selling their fuel for 500 and 550, I would like to say that, that that's about 300, about 300, 200 or 300, I'm not too sure. But I think about that's two times uh, or three times the, the uh, what it used to be. Now, for you to know the kind of people that we are as Nigerians, the kind of transport costs or the pricing in the transport sector now, does it reflect two or three hundred percent? You have people that used to charge a hundred naira, charging five hundred naira today, does it reflect two hundred and three hundred percent? You see, sometimes we are we are um, our worst enemies, those who, who are supposed to be um, uh, the ones that are in the vulnerable sector, the vulnerable uh, demography of Nigeria, uh, in things like this, become the, the, the Shylocks of the system. Yes. They become vultures. Too. Because you would be hearing some of, you know, you, you'll be hearing some kinds of, uh, of charges that these people put on passengers. You'll be wondering where those charges are coming from because it does not reflect the increase, yes. the percentage, in terms of percentage, it does not reflect the increase in pump, pump price of wealth. So we, we, as a people, we have to address that. Why do we like to hurt each other? Indeed. Why do we feel the necessity to take advantage of even people within our social level. Indeed. These are some of Because the taxi driver, yes, the taxi driver is bringing hardship, undue hardship to the trader who is using his taxi to transport himself from one place to the other. And the trader in the market He's using the opportunity that people, a teacher, is coming to buy from him to also uh, wreak havoc on the economy of that teacher unnecessarily. So we need to examine ourselves. Why do we do the things that we do to ourselves? Why do we find satisfaction in doing those things? I hear you. Now let me... Yesterday uh, somebody uh, was uh, leaving sorry, from sorry for interrupting life camp to uh, the airport in... Uh, in I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Yes. Ma Mazi Okorafo has been waiting for quite a while. He's calling in from Arochuku. Good morning, Mazi. Is it Sayuri? I guess. For the past three years, our bank and others have been telling Nigerian government, remove subsidy, remove subsidy. They would echo the same thing. That was in March this year, during the day, their first uh, international economic summit. Nigerian government should say bye bye to, what, to all these uh, subsidies. Reason that it's only the Bush Act that they stop to the favor. But the question now is uh, Nigerians should at least the, the authority concerned could have looked at the issue of this, uh, this our Dangote refinery. If Dangote refinery is now working, maybe that they said uh, July, something there, are, at least that way to have before they talk about this issue of social. But the thing is, uh, most annoying thing is that uh, most of these three stations that are selling this fuel, they have this fuel as an old stock. But they went and corrupted the private is no longer at least they could have but they have finished the sales they have. When they bring in new stuff, they try to vote. Now 
some states, many people are not going to work because of this. But if it That's is exactly right, what it Honorable right. Eta was just saying, Mazi. Exactly. Yes. If you check with Sayori, if you check with Sayori, you see that there is things have been going on, selling at one liter, 800 naira for the past three years. It is it. One, that is one liter, 800 naira. This uh, over 800 naira for the past three years in this country. If uh, people will say how many people are using kerosene, but because of that one liter uh, 800, that is why see many people diverted to gas and uh, not only gas, charcoal, not only firewood. That is why see the procession of uh, uh, our uh, uh, bush is so is so rapid that people have just gone to cut all the trees so that would have helped and said all this erosion. All, all these things we see that they have side effects. There's nothing in this country that comes out of this. But the thing is this, uh, I will tell the government that all these uh, modular refineries, they should try as much as possible and put them in, in so that you use. And Nigeria should know that this crude oil we export, we are getting more unemployment for Nigeria. Reason. Statistics have shown that from crude oil, you extract over 6,000 items from crude oil. Not only petrol, not only crazy, not only diesel, not only gel. And for some of these practices, that all of them are being used with that oil. God bless us. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi. Thank you, Mazi Okora, for, for you know, calling in. Um, okay, uh, back to you, Honorable Eta. You see, you, the situation, I remember once uh, on this program, we had Mr. Uh, Mele Keari, who uh, I think he was speaking, it was in the lead up to uh, Nigeria, you know, buying into the Dangote refinery. And he had spoken about the current regime where uh, diesel, diesel uh, fuel has been deregulated totally. There are those who are saying, well, we, we haven't seen the benefit of that. You know, we, uh, if it has been deregulated totally, the diesel is somewhere in the region of 800. And Mr. Kiari had said at the time that actually it's an anomaly for diesel to be way up there and then PMS uh, that we, most people use, you know, at 185. He said it should be the other way around. Um, so we, it, it's, it's pretty confusing, but it's, it's a task that must be done. And you spoke about some of those let me use Mr. Lackey's words, uh, uh, interventions that will have to be done. You spoke about transportation and all of those things, which you also called a sort of a tokenism. Um, but I was making the point that most Nigerians feel left very much on their own, even as they are aware of the necessity of this and want to, in their mind, support it. But you have to be alive to support. I overstated that. On I, I agree with you that... I, 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 I should continue? Yes, please. Yes, I, you have, I, I agree with you that you have to be alive to, to even benefit from, uh, from what uh, the new government is going to do. I agree with you that that, that, must, uh, that must be in the mind of government. And I am also sure that the government is not uh, oblivious of that fact. Uh, but... Uh, like I said before, uh, my brother intervened uh, from. Uh, I, I think that we need, we need, we really do need to examine ourselves and find out the 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 the, the mathematics. The, the numbers don't add up. They don't add up. The increment in the things that we, the Nigerians, uh, do between ourselves and the increment of the. Uh, uh, a pump price of fuel it does not add up. That, that's number one, you know. Uh, and, and number two is that um, um, very soon, very soon, when we're talking about diesel, you know, you must also understand that diesel itself, even though deregulated, was also imported into Nigeria. So diesel also came with this land. Uh, landing charges. That's number one. Number two, I am not also aware that uh, the, the importation of diesel uh, was deregulated. That is to say that they didn't keep a cap on, on the price of diesel, but I do not know whether anyone 
could go to Europe on its own, on his on his or her own and import uh, diesel into Nigeria. That I do not know because that could be the problem. You see, if it is the NNPC that regulates who imports uh, diesel into the country, uh, then you must also blame the bureaucracy. Apart from the landing charges, it could be that it is because it is regulated mm -hmm. in terms of the importation, not in terms of the price. Okay. That it may also be a problem. Now, if you say that a market is deregulated, then the NMPC should not be in a position to tell us who to import what. Indeed. They can tell us the quality to import, yes, but they cannot tell us who to import what. I mean, that could be the contradiction that has made for the price of diesel to be where it is. Okay. And I do know that even diesel itself is going to be produced in the nation, it's going to be produced in Nigeria. Not just by Dangote, it's going to be produced by the government refineries. And for your information, I am not of the opinion that the government should keep the refineries. I think that it is not government's business to do business. And, but that is another discussion for another day. Now, I do know that Boa is also constructing refineries. There are modular refineries that are almost at the stages of completion. When all of these come together, we are going to have a glut a glut in the in the market, and when that happens, the I mean, it's economy is one hundred one. When you have enough supply, or even you have oversupply, the price will come down. It is natural, indeed. And then they, because the price yeah. at which Boa will sell to the market may be different from the price that Dangote may sell to the market for the market. I usually use the cement as uh, you know a point in this discussion. In 2019, cement was going for about 2,500, 2,600 Naira per bag. Today, cement is going for 4,500. The reason cement is at that price, because cement, would, given the inflationary trend in Nigeria, cement would have cost about 10 to 15,000 Naira per bag by now, if we did not have enough supply in the system. So, the moment we have enough supply, of petroleum products, I am very sure that we have enough supply that the prices will come down. It is natural. Indeed. And we must define the role of the NNPC. The NNPC may become a cog in the wheel of progress. So we have to be very careful about the role of the NNPC, even in the Nigerian market. Because as of today, I do not think we have a Nigerian market. The refineries, the government refineries are not working. Okay. Well, I, the Dangote refinery is here to come on stream. Yeah. The Bua refinery has not been completed. So we have only market, a market that is, that has all, all of the variables are external. Mm, mm. It, I, I, I think the chief executive of NMPC was saying that by law, uh, NMPC will not actually be importing more than 30% uh, of our requirements. And in other words, it would now be thrown up to whoever uh, person or corporate body uh, was interested and when you have more people in it just as you were explaining uh, competitive forces will be engaged and the price will be driven down if it has to go up it has to go up but that with more people just as you were explaining um, it, it's likely to come down that was the sort of hope uh, that he was given uh, in trying to give an understanding to the way the article was phrased given an understanding to the um, hierarchy, uh, top hierarchy of the uh, ruling party. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a thing that has to be done. All hands seem to be on deck. And um, labor, I guess, um, is going to have to understand this a lot better than it understands it at the moment. Because labor, and you can imagine it has Nigerian workers behind it, labor is saying that you uh, I, my people stranded. I, I should speak, I think I should... I should say a little thing about the labor. I think labor is set up to protect the rights and the, and the privileges of workers. And uh, they share the same, the same values with government because government is, not at government is not set up at variance with that principle. Government is set up to do exactly the same, to protect the privilege of, to, to you know, protect the welfare Indeed. and the security of every Nigerian citizen in this country. So they, they are on the same page when it comes to the welfare and, and security. And when I mean security, it comes with also economic security and all of that. That's right. So they are on the same page. 
I, I, I think that. Uh, uh, sorry, um, sorry, sir. Let me squeeze in. Ada, Ada has called in. I don't know. She usually would have called in before. Yes, now. Good morning uh, to you, Ada. Good morning, Ayori. Good morning, Honorable Hilliard. Ayori, I could see President Boo, Tinubu. You know, he just like uh, Ada uh, somebody they can has been passed on the road and then have to pull the boom by the horn. That's what is happening, you know. So I think he feels that if he doesn't do it the way he's doing it now, we will never stop this subsidy. This subsidy, as I tell you, I tell you, tell you number, it's really fraudulent. A lot of fraud is going on there. But the thing now, what I want to know now is that, the, for me, the palliative they're talking about, the most effective palliative is to get our refineries working. No, they don't go to own. They don't go to own. We're not even change the price of fuel. They have even said it, you know. So I don't know. It's oh. more of export oriented, you know. Oh, so all right again, then, Ada. Ada, I'm so sorry, Ada. We've run out of time. Uh, thank you very much for calling in, Ada. So, well, <laughs> Honorable Etta, uh, thank you for making the time for us. It's, uh, uh, we, 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 we're going to have to keep a close watch on this, and uh, it's such an urgent matter that I'm sure that it's going to be very, very timely. Even they have said they are going to be resuming their talks with, uh, between government and labor uh, on Sunday, they're not even waiting for the beginning of the week. So that shows how urgent it is. And so I'm sure very, very shortly, we should be able to see the road a bit more clear as to how we're going to operate this regime. So once more, thank you very much for making time for us this morning. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Okay, so that's our program today. Please join us on Monday for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now. Presentation by ShopX TV. Do you spend the night trying to get comfortable? Your knees rub bone on bone. Your back and hips ache. You wake up in pain? Not anymore. ShopX TV is proud to introduce the Contour Legacy Pillow. The patented, ergonomically designed tapered leg pillow that naturally fits the contours of your legs, knees and thighs to help align your spine and alleviate pain. Watch, when you sleep on your side, your leg falls forward, twisting your pelvis and lower back, putting pressure on your spine, hip and sciatic. But the Contour Legacy Pillow cushions your knees and cradles your legs, relieving stress on joints while restoring your lower back alignment. Sleeping on your side, your leg comes over and puts you out of alignment, causing lower back pain, hip pain, even knee pain. By using the Contour Legacy Pillow, it restores the natural alignment of the spine, helping to alleviate pain and pressure, leading to much more restful sleep. Old-fashioned leg pillows are bulky, but the anatomical design of the Legacy Pillow fits perfectly the shape of your body the way nature intended. You can even use two together for full leg alignment. Legacy Pillow is exclusively ventilated, so it always stays cool and dry. With top crescent design, it cuddles up to you perfectly and easily moves with you. Ordinary pillows go flat, but the Legacy Pillow is made up of soft memory foam, so it never